a rally in the South. This was during the free speech, the uh, civil rights movement. So uh, one of the uh, African-American participants in the rally got up and, and was very angry. And he said, uh, look, they're beating on us. Why don't we beat them? And the, uh, part, the speaker who was in charge of the ceremony, I guess, the service, he said, because that's not who we are. And that made a profound impression on me that your commitment to nonviolence or the opposite in a very profound sense defines who you are. So after that, I, I got keenly interested. We, we knew nothing to speak of about Gandhi, um, but the really significant change came much later in 1966, when I met my uh, teacher, Ignati Shrodan, and he had, uh, had had a very profound experience meeting Gandhi in the 40s. And so he, he revered Gandhi as many of the great stages of modern India did. Why third yeah. harmony? Michael, you called your new film, you, you made a documentary film that you've been dreaming of making for many, many years, and, and you've chosen to call it the third harmony. Can you speak about that, please? Yes, indeed, Rajani. Uh, thank you. It goes back to a, a statement of Shankara, Shankaracharya, that we, we suffer from the environment, we suffer from other human beings, and we suffer from ourselves. So reflecting on that, Sri Ishran once said, okay, then we need to establish harmony with the universe, harmony with other beings, especially fellow human beings, and harmony within ourselves. So that is the third harmony. On one level, uh, what, the, what you said is true, that our efforts at this point are not potent enough to overcome the forces of egotism and uh, greed and separateness that have basically in terms of the United States taken over the, uh, the machinery, the structures of government. We have been preparing for months. And for example, in the United States, or something that Meta is a part of is called the Shanti Sena Network. And this is a coordinating body that uh, coordinates the work of groups around the country who train volunteers to be monitors at um, events, public events, you know, marches, rallies, things like that, and learn a lot of de-escalation skills. And it's become quite a technology. For example, they talk about bystander intervention training and one thing or another. And and I'm happy to report that thousands of election monitors have been trained by these groups and that by and large, the, at the polling stations, I have yet to read of any outbreak of violence or even intimidation. Thanks surely in part to these thousands of well-trained volunteers. Now they are also committed to attempt de-escalation in outbreaks of violence, which mm -hmm. of course can be dangerous. But I think what we know from the last, oh, about 25, 30 years, groups like Nonviolent Peace Force, uh, that it can be very effective and not nearly as dangerous as military intervention. Well, the... the Mission has several different forms. The shortest one is promoting nonviolence worldwide. And the slightly longer one, which is more descriptive really, is helping people practice nonviolence more safely and more effectively.